Okay, so it is Wednesday, November 4th. This is for Science of Cooking today. And today's recipe is going to be berry hand pies. Uh, so the recipe is in your Google Classroom, but it's also going to be in the description below on the video when it's posted to YouTube later. Um, so it is a nice, chilly, cool morning. You know, it's bright and sunny. Um, it's still on the cold side, so a great day to do some baking um, and have the oven going. So what I'm going to show you guys today is, is a berry hand pie, right? Which just means a small mini pie that you can literally just kind of put in the palm of your hand and eat it. Um, so individual pies, single servings, um, which is great, you know, if you got to bring to an event and things like that, instead of trying to cut slices of pie um, and, you know, having to have plates and things, it's a little bit messier. So these are great little portable pies. You can pack them in a lunchbox and things. Um, but the pie dough that I'm going to show you this morning is really good neutral pie dough. Right? It's the same pie dough I use for all my Thanksgiving pies and Christmas pies and things. Um, so if you want to use this uh, pie crust recipe, which is just, it's called the flaky um, pie crust, right? That you can use that to make an apple pie, a blueberry pie, right? Um, a pecan pie and things, you know, just as easily with the same exact recipe. We're just using it today to make smaller versions of mini pies, which is also good for Thanksgiving and things as well, too, because, you know, you might want to have different flavors. And this way you have a smaller portion of each pie. You can eat one of each, right? Um, so that's what I think. All right. So we're going to start off today with a nice large mixing bowl, right? Uh, and I'm going to add in my two cups of flour, okay? So this is an all-purpose flour. Uh, you don't want to use anything that's too high in gluten because then it'll make, you know, we're not making bread. We're making pie crust. We want it nice and light, okay? Um, so you can use an all-purpose flour, you can use a pastry flour for this, but you wouldn't want to use a bread flour, okay? So we are going to spoon in to the cup two cups worth of flour, so we're going to do one at a time. Remember, we're going to scrape this level. So I'm trying to keep this nice and light and fluffy and not overpack it. We want the pie crust to be nice and light and tender, okay? All right. So there's one cup of flour. So we need, for our pie crust, we need two cups of flour. So that's what we're making today. And so we're gonna do two. So I'm just overfilling this with a spoon and then using the butter knife, right, to scrape off that excess. Okay, so we're not packing this in tight. We wanna keep this nice and light in the amount of flour that's going into the crust, okay? Now from this, we're gonna need one teaspoon of salt, so you can use regular table salt, kosher salt, uh, just make sure it's a nice level teaspoonful, okay? That in. This also gets a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, so that's what's gonna help give us a nice flaky texture to this, because um, it'll help separate the layers and get a little bit of rice, not a lot, but enough. Um, so remember, baking powder in the can, not baking soda. So a quarter teaspoon, so it's a very small amount, so scrape it on the edge, okay? And now what I'm going to do with this is just give this my spoon a little quick stir. I just want to stir in that salt and the baking powder before I start adding in my other ingredients. Right. So pie crust is one of the easiest things to do, um, but it's one of those things that frustrates people the most also, right? Because it is so easy to get it wrong, okay, where it gets really tough and it's hard to roll and things like that. The biggest problem is over mixing, okay? So you want to undermix your pie crust because then you still have to roll it out afterwards, right? So if I mix it really too much now, when I go to roll it out after and by the time I bake it, it makes a really tough pie crust that nobody really wants to eat, okay? So now I'm going to be adding in some shortening, right? So Crisco store brand, that's fine, doesn't matter. Um, I need three quarters of a cup total, okay? So I'm just going to scoop my shortening here. Right, so a nice quarter cup measure. So it's good to have a little spatula handy. And I'm just gonna drop this in the flour, and you'll see this in just a second. So there's one. We need two more of those. So it's only one quarter of a cup. And this quarter cup size is nice, easy to get in the can. So there's two. And then we're going to need three. Now, you can do pie crust with butter. Um, just know that you're going to get more steam and you're not going to maintain the shape as well as you will when you're using um, vegetable shortening. 
But you can also do your pie crust with lard and they'll have the same results as shortening. But this is vegetable based, so if you don't eat animal fats, uh, you wouldn't want to use lard, okay? So now with this, all right, I've just got my Crisco sitting in right on top of the flour, okay? Now, this is when it gets a little bit messy. I already have a cup of water here ready and my tablespoon. But I don't want to add any water in yet. What I want to do is I want to break this fat up, right, into little pieces. So I'm going to start off by covering this all with a little bit of flour, right? And I've got my little clumps in here. And I'm just going to start working this, right? Keep coating it with the flour. So think of like a claw machine, okay? Now, my goal is not to mix this fat all the way through and make it disappear. I want to end up with little pea size or so pieces of fat mixed in. Now you can do pie crust on the machine, like a mixer or things like that. But that's when I find that people tend to over mix it because um, you can't really, you can't feel it, right? And you don't know what's happening with the fat inside. So little small pieces. So it's gonna look very grainy, right? But that's what we want. Little chunks of fat in there. Let me just give this a little toss. And now I'm going to add in the cold water. Now, when you look at the recipe, it's going to say five to six tablespoons, right? This is not an exact. But there's a reason for that. Because I said on humid days, you might need less water. On drier days, you might need a little bit more. So five to six is, you know, an estimate. But it could be a different number, okay? So I'm going to start off with the five, three, four, and five. And this is very cold water. So everything's a little bit slightly chilled, um, especially if it's a warm day. Put everything in the freezer for a few minutes, a good 15 minutes or half an hour before you make your crust. Um, you can also just put it in the refrigerator for a while, too. So I'm starting to mix this together. You start to see that it's coming together, right? But it's definitely not quite. So I know by feeling it that I'm gonna need that six tablespoon at least of water. Let's add that in. Now you're just trying to get this to come together, right? As a solid mass. Like I said, I'm not, I'm very gentle with my hands. I'm not trying to make that fat disappear. Right? Keep cleaning your hands throughout. This is when it gets messy. But this is when it's you know, fun. So you can see that this is now starting to come together as a dough. Right? Right. Take all this excess off. Now this is when people want to just keep mixing and mixing and mixing. And this is when you need to stop, okay? All right, so the reason is, is that it's gonna be hard to see, but there are still streaks of fat throughout this, right? Because I did not mix that shortening in all the way, right? So if you think of like a good steak that has fat marbling through, right? And you see those streaks. Same thing here with the pie crust. Okay. Now it is best if you can let the pie crust rest for a little while. Um, you know, even if it's 15 minutes to half hour, um, it doesn't have to be refrigerated. You can just leave this sitting out um, in the bowl for a little bit because the flour is still absorbing all the moisture from that water, right? And what will happen is, is that it will roll easier if I can let this rest a little bit. So I do have one that's ready. So I'm just going to take a little bit of flour though. Rubbing on my hands to clean those off, and don't worry, I got my trash can right here. I'm not throwing this on my floor. I'm worried, not worried about having flour all over my hands because we're going to be rolling and flouring everything in a second. So I'm just going to let this sit off to the side here. Um, I've got a little batch scraper ready for my pie crust, all right? So if, I, if anything starts to stick for cutting and things, and you're going to want to have a rolling pin handy. All right, uh, a little bit of flour, all-purpose flour, the same flour you're using for the crust, 
Okay. And last part of this that we're going to need is going to be an egg wash. Okay. So I'm going to take just one egg. Remember, crack it on the table. Okay. So one egg cracked. And I'm going to add in about a teaspoon's worth of water just to loosen that up a little bit. You don't need a lot, just a little bit. And this is going to be my egg wash. Okay. So you just want to mix this up really well. This is what I'm going to use as my glue to seal my pies. I'm also going to brush this on the outside of the pies after to help give it that nice golden color. So we'll just have getting this ready ahead of time here. Okay, so we've got our egg wash. I'm just going to set that to the side. And then I've got a pastry brush ready for that in a few minutes. Okay. So now I have a little bit of pie dough prepped ahead. Okay. And this one here, you can really kind of see that fat, right? See all those little fat pieces? You can tell that it wasn't mixed in. But this one is definitely looks a little bit different than one we just made because it's had a little bit of time to sit. Okay. So on the surface of the counter, you're going to need to dust this with a little bit of flour. But you don't need a giant mound of flour, right? So dusting with flour, think of like snow, right? A light snow dusting. Okay. I had one of those yesterday morning. Out this way. Okay. Kind of rub it around. Make sure you don't have any wet spots on your table, right? And then that extra, just push it to the side. Okay. Because I can work that in after. You can put a little bit on the pie crust itself. And you can put a little bit of flour on your rolling pin. Okay. Now with this, I'm going to take and roll out and cut some circles and I'm going to stretch a little bit more. But this way I'll have about the same size. Um, you know, consistent pieces throughout. Okay. Now, with pie dough, you don't need to flip this. But I am just going to pin, roll this out, but keep picking it up to make sure that it's not sticking, right? So keep moving it around. I want to get this out to about an eighth of an inch. Right? So pie crush shouldn't be too thick. Okay. Like I said, and this is, you know, something you can use for a, um, a whole pie. Okay, get a little more flour there. So like I said, if you find a spot that's sticking, and add a little bit more flour, but only a little flour at a time. It's too much flour is going to dry your crust out. We don't want that. Just keep adding to your pin if you need to. I don't need any consistent shape right now. Um, it was a circle, so if you start with a circle, it's easiest to keep it a circle if you are doing a whole pie. But we're going to be using a circle cutter anyways. So this is about a three and a half inch circle cutter. You could use a glass, right, a jar, um, and set it down and even just cut around something with a knife if it doesn't want to cut on its own, right? A little flour on the cutter. And I'm going to see how many circles I can get out of this section. And this is only about half the pie crust here. Okay. So the recipe will give you enough to do a bottom crust, right? Or if you wanted to do some nice fancy, you know, lattice work on an apple pie or things like that, right? So we're just going to cut out the six here. And you can re-roll the scraps. Just remember that the more that you mix these and roll them, the tougher they're going to get, okay. uh, consistency-wise. So the more tender pieces are going to always be the ones from the first roll, like these six here. Okay. So I'm going to pull away all that excess. Just set that to the side. And now I have my circles ready to go. So I'm just going to use my little bench scraper here. You can use a spatula to do this, a little metal spatula. We're just moving these out of the way for a sec. There we go. Now I'm going to flour a little bit more right here, right? Because this is where I'm going to be working. And I want to make these circles bigger. These are a little bit too small. Um, I want to make it so that, you know, I get a decent sized little pie. Okay, so about a five inch circle is what I'm looking for when it's done. Okay. Okay. 
circle-ish. Doesn't have to be a perfect circle, right? Um, but this is how my pie is going to be made, right? So now I'm going to be putting a filling in here in the center. Now for this today, I have a blackberry jam, okay? Um, a homemade one that I made for my black, many, many blackberries in my yard this um, season. So you want something that's a little bit on the thick side. You don't want a jelly. A jelly will tend to ooze out. Um, so a nice thick jam. You could also use canned pie filling, right? Like a blueberry pie filling, a cherry pie filling, things like that. Um, but stick with something like a thicker strawberry jam. Make sure it says jam on the label because that means it's a thicker consistency and a little bit chunkier, which will hold up better in the center of the pie, right? So I've got my egg wash ready. I've got my pastry brush, right? Because I'm going to need that for my glue. And I've got my jam with a spoon. And these pies are going to get about a tablespoon of jam inside the center of each one. You don't want to overfill them either because it will end up oozing out as you bake it. So we're going to show you that. Building them together. Okay. So we're going to take our blackberry jam here. Like I said, it's going to get about a tablespoon-ish filling, right? Not a lot. Like I said, these are just single serving pies. Um, and if you're looking to cut back on sugar too, these just less filling less sweet, less sugar, right? So now I've got my pastry brush with the egg wash on it and I'm just very lightly going to come around the outside edge, okay? Like I said, you wanna leave at least an inch around your circle because this is gonna spread a little bit when I fold this up, okay? You take and fold it over, right? It's kind of like an empanada, or pierogi, right? Try to line up your edges as you go around, okay? Now on here, once this is pinched shut, I could leave it that way, but I want to give it a little bit of a decorative edge. Okay. Make sure I'm not wet on the surface here. And I'm just going to come in with a fork and just press them. Right. Now to finish these off, these are going to get an egg wash after. But I'm going to show you making a couple more of these first. Okay. And this is going to go onto a baking sheet. With a silpat liner, you could do a little bit of parchment paper on there. Um, and it's just a nice non-stick cookie sheet will work as well. You just want something that the pies, the dough is not going to stick to. Um, so the parchment or silpat are good in case it does ooze out any filling. It'll be easy and quick to clean after. So we'll do that again. That's a little bit better. Tablespoons worth of filling right in the center. Like I said, you're going to get messy. It's going to be hard to stay clean when you're doing all this. So that's part of the fun. Right. Come in with your fork and just crimp that edge, right? And that's just helping those two layers that we put the glue on stick together. Okay. I'll do another one more. In here. Like I said, they don't need to be perfect circles. They're fine. Okay. So make sure that that brush with that egg wash too, you know, it's always a good idea to take and brush off the excess because we just want a light coating. We're not looking um, to have it drowning in egg wash. Okay. Fold it over. I'll turn this so you guys can see better. And if that fork sticks at all, dip it into a little bit of flour. Right. So these are great single serving size pies. All right, I'm just gonna move this stuff to the side for a second. I'm gonna bring the tray in so you can see the finishing of the pies, right? So we wanna give this a nice finish so that um, they look pretty when they're done. And we want to give them just a little bit more flavor. Put a little bit of sugar on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my egg wash. I'm just going to brush the whole pie. Okay. And you would do this with your top crust of your pie. 
and making a whole one. So not too much. We don't want to have a puddle of scrambled eggs on the mat here. We just want to have a nice light shine. And this lace will help give you that pretty golden color. Okay. Now for the last part of this, one of the things that I showed you guys before in class recently was the vanilla sugar. Um, so this was just some sugar with some vanilla beans in it that is um, set for a couple weeks now. And I'm going to take a little bit of this vanilla sugar and sprinkle that on top of my egg wash, right? Just come in. Don't worry about the extra, right? And this just smells really good. But what this is going to do, this is going to give you a nice little crunch on the crust, okay? You can see those little specks of vanilla on there. This is just a nice little way to fancy up your Thanksgiving. I'm just going to wipe this extra off so we don't have too much there. All right. And that's going to be pretty much it, except you need a little vent hole, right? Because these will tend to pop, and it's going to want to release some steam out somewhere. So I'm just going to make a little slit up in the thick part here of the pie, right? You could do little imprints with a fork as well, right? Just make one little mark through. And this is a little steam vent, so when this puffs up in the oven, the steam will escape out of here and it won't crack and split the pie open, okay? So I have my oven on at 350 degrees. I'm just gonna throw these in right now. And these are gonna take about 15 minutes, okay? What you're looking for is a nice golden brown color um, that the pie sets up really well. Luckily, we have them finished right here, okay? So these are your mini hand pies. And I said nice golden color. You can see that on the bottom side of the crust, right? They really hold their shape. Um, that sugar on there, it's got gave it a nice little crunch to the top, okay? And then I'm going to break one of these open so you can see on the inside, right? And then look at that on the inside. So you can use, like I said, this is blackberry, but you could use, um, you know, strawberry jam, a cherry pie filling, whatever your favorite is. Um, I would suggest canned or pre-made pie fillings that are already partially cooked, not raw ones, um, because these pies are only in the oven for 15 minutes. So raw apples and things like that would not have a long enough time to cook all the way through. Um, so if you make the pie filling ahead, there's a lot of recipes for that. Um, or if you do something that's you know from a can version i said or jams those will be able to cook quickly um unlike you know something like raw apples okay that will cook better in a larger pie you can use the same crust that and just do it in a bigger pie because those tend to be in the oven for um, a good 45 minutes so the apples would cook all the way through but that's it for your berry ham pies right nice simple flaky pastry um pie crust that you can use for any of your holiday pies you know sweet pies savory pies meat pies things like that um, for the holidays. So hopefully you guys will try the pie crust um, at some point and make something fabulous. Well, that's it for very hand pies for today.